Hey Paul, you'll get kicked out of this. You remember Kayla Long? Mm -hmm. She's my medical director at Centra. Is she really? Yeah. Like I see her. I talk to her probably on the phone three times a week at least. Hmm. It's you ever, I will. You ever hear the horror story, Paul, about the guy that started IV on himself with Pepto Bismol? That's his boss. No, it's my training coordinator. His training coordinator, I'm sorry. Oh, one of the training coordinators. He told me that I died. Hmm? I died. The guy in charge of your training started IV with Pepto on himself. Oh, but he came close to dying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've never looked. Yeah, I've never looked at the label on Pepto. But I was like, "What is it? Like, what was the problem? Like heavy metal poisoning or something?" Because I wasn't sure what all was in there. He's like, "Nope, it's a lot of aspirin in it." Apparently, apparently, when aspirin—I didn't know this. Apparently, when aspirin hits your lungs, it crystallizes, <laughs> and it's pretty much a miracle that he didn't die. <laughs> like, honestly, got a miracle he didn't die. Today's January 26, right? Yes. Yes. All day long, part of the night. Paul, you were already on the clock for this, right? Mm -hmm. And you weren't staying over, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because. I dropped the ball. Oh. She's scheduled for February 2nd, and today is January 26th. So. So I'm a week ahead on her lecture, but I did not prepare one for tonight. What do you want to talk about? I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's really embarrassing because I literally was looking at the calendar and I wrote her name down on this, and then it's next week. Um, hey, look on the bright side. You don't have to come up with a lecture for next week. No, I don't want to a lecture for next week. Awesome. Uh, what do you have? I mean, I have my stuff on uh, the lab interpretation that I could show you really quick. Or do we want to throw <coughs> it out of order and do something else? <laughs> Is she doing labs? Is that what she's doing? Labs and ABGs. What else do you have? Do you have any other shows ready? I do. On my share drive, I have some. Trauma. Want to look at trauma back What do you got on trauma? 
Original topic of the night. So, the flight physio that you need to be aware of for the uh, critical care exam is the gas loss. It's a lot about gas loss. Boyles, Henry's. Boyles, Henry, Dalton, Gay, Lucix, and um, there's another one. A lot of it. Fake salt. That was the other one. A lot of it was stuff like. If you're taking a patient with a Foley and it's intubated up in the air, what's going to be your problem? And Boyle's Law is going to be your problem because... Boyle's Law is going to be the problem because when Boyle's Law, you go up in the air, the ET cuff will slowly start to deflate. The Foley cast fine because it's full of water. Does it deflate or expand? It, the pressure decreases. The, the pressure, pressure so the decreases. blade expands. Yes, sorry. Yes. That's the... That's the hard part about flight gas. That's why I didn't want to teach flight physio. Because it's really hard. And it's stuff that... I can talk about it. It's hard. That's the stuff that we came into when I did the uh, ASAP book. Um, and then we have the different types of hypoxia. Um, this one wasn't too bad of a long lecture. It's just... I apologize for being unprepared tonight. I definitely didn't schedule tonight because I thought today was the second and she was coming. <laughs> the court kind of threw me off today, so. Oh? Yeah, I was off for court this morning with the ex-husband. Oh, how'd it go? I got an extra $15 in child support a month. Yay. Had to drive an hour up there to go to court, though. Where's that at? Pulaski. Oh. Where I originally filed. Yeah. Um, have you been reading up on the stuff we've been doing? Or was there anything you wanted to just talk about with it and do some go over? Or do you want me to go over some of the ABG stuff with you so that way you'll be ready for next Is week? Is it just me tonight? Looks like it. Yeah. Where's the CE sheet? Down there. Not that I need it. <laughs> I told you I got my letter, right? Oh, you did? Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I got my letter. The, you want to know the funny part about that? What? So, I renewed my registry in March of last year, and then I renewed my state in July. Mm -hmm. I got a letter two weeks ago that I'm eligible for research now. Hmm. How about we do this fall? How about, since it's just you and me here, you said you didn't get a chance to read these. you want me to read some of these with you and go over some of the diagnostic stuff? Yeah, we can do that. ABGs are one of my favorites. I love it. Since I learned how to interpret these, I love them. So, <laughs> grab the case study down there. And I won't publish this video. We'll just make it a private one, so it'll be like a study session. So with ABGs... They hand you the thing with the pH, the CO2. Just got it in here. They hand you the thing with the pH, the CO2, and all that good stuff. And you're looking at it, and you're like, well, what in the hell do I do with this? And the cool thing about it is you can interpret it step by step and kind of help determine what's going on with the patients. And that's what I like about it. So when you look at an ABG, the first thing you look at is the pH. And the, I put the cheat sheet down there for the ABGs. That's when I was talking about, honey. For the ABGs in the lab. I'm sorry. You, I figured you'd just catch on and do better. It's at the very bottom, and I'll save these for next week. You look at the first thing you look at. And this was all brought to me from the lecture of my critical care class that I took a while ago. And the first thing you do is you figure out the pH. Is it acid or is it alkalotic? Um, and this will start with 25 because that's an easy one it looks like. It's acidotic. It is acidotic because the pH is lower than 7.35. Mm -hmm. The next thing that you look at 
is, is a metabolic component or is it respiratory? You measure is it a metabolic abnormality based on the bicarb. If the bicarb is normal, then it's okay and it's a, if it's a, and it's probably respiratory. If the bicarb changes, it means the metabolism is trying to compensate for the respiratory system. And then you can check the CO2. So in this one, and notice these are important, by the way, this is PCO2, PACO2, partial, which is slightly different. The lab values are different. So it's not the traditional 35 to 45. It's, um, or no, it is for 35 to 45 for CO2, but it's 80 to 100 for O2. So the CO2 is low, mm -hmm. the O2 is normal, and the bicarb is low. So that's metabolic. And now, but is it a compensated metabolic is the question. Yeah, because the CO2 is not, uh, is not, well, the CO2 is a little low. We were working on this one, correct? Yeah. Yeah. 7.36, so 7 pH is normal. pH is normal. Oh, no, you're yeah, doing 722, but yeah. okay. I got 735. We're, we're, we're doing question number 24. 24, yes. So 24. P pH is 7. Point what? 36. 36. Normal. So that's normal. PaCO2 is low because it's between 35 and 45 is what you want on that. Correct. 80 and 100 is what you said on the O2? Correct. And so 92 is normal. So that PaO2 is the same as O2 sat, right? No, it is not the same. It's but it's the part, same range we're looking for. It's 80 to 100 instead of 90 to 100. Okay. And then... The bicarb is just a little low. The bicarb is two points too low. So, coming here. i got to find the answer now. So I'd say they're probably pretty normal. Just bear them down. 24, but it's back to basics. Don't judge me, Thomas. Do you know how hard it was to do this on my stovetop? Because I tried to type every single one of these off. They say the answer is D. What is D? I plan on printing these out for next week. Compensated metabolic. Right, and they say it's a compensated metabolic acidosis because the bicarb is trying to compensate because the bicarb is slightly lower. It's a metabolic in nature because of the bicarb, and it's not respiratory. So if the metabolic was high, it'd be a compensated metabolic... Alkalosis. Alkalosis. Yeah. So their big thing about it is to look, start with the pH and look at the pH, is it normal? Figure out, is it metabolic or respiratory? In this case, the bicarb's messed up, so it's metabolic. All right. The CO2 is also messed up, right. which makes it un... which makes it trying to compensate for it. So okay. it's really... it's really like a... It's like a five-step process. So let's do the next one. The next one is about... Um, oh, no. The next two the next, steps. He meant the next one on the last yeah. page. The other two things to consider, though, the last thing I'll tell you about it is on the anion gap. You know how um, sodium is positive, chloride, and bicarb are negative? When you add them up, they should be in a normal range, and when they're not, that's how you get this anion gap. That's literally what it means, the differences in the ions the charges are off balance, and that's how you end up with an anion gap being off. Cannibal, when you uh, calculate this, it can help you to get a delta gap, and the only reason that we would do that is to see if there's a bunch of different things going on. And that's why, that's what it's important for. It's the only reason that they really, that they bring it up. The anion gap should be 10. Plus or minus four. So, so it should be between six, 6 and 14. 14. Yeah. Based on the ions, and that's the normal value for that. Why does it say 10 plus or minus 4? Why didn't it just say 6 to 14? Because that's how they list it in the book, okay? <laughs> that's exactly how they list it in the book. So I tried to make it all match exactly like it is in the book. But do you know how hard it is to format a plus or minus sign? Really hard. And I could not get it to format on Google Documents. So that is what I ended up with, plus or minus. <laughs> All right, number 25, 7.22, so they're, al they're acidotic. I have the actual number two. Okay. Yeti and I apologize for not being more prepared tonight. Nothing to apologize for. It's just 
Right. So looking at it first, the pH, 7.22. Acidotic. Very good. PACO2 is double, almost, normal range. Correct. So the PACO2 is very high. So high would be... Out. It, it's just high. The PACO2 is high, and it's got a respiratory component involved. The PAO2 Two is extremely low. Yes, it's 56, and the bicarb is also low. This makes me believe I would have to. I'm gonna say it's a mixed on, disturbance. I would agree with that, with a D for 25. And we'll see if we talk through it correctly. And we did. Yay, Paul! It says it tells you it's uncompensated. Because you got both. Partially compensated. pH tells you it's acidotic. CO2 is highly suggestive of acidosis, and the, the bicarb is low. Therefore, it's a mixed metabolic and respiratory. It's also yes. called a mixed gas or mixed disturbance. All right, because both are off. Right. All right, 26. So the patient's ABG is 7.55. Alkalotic. Very good. PaCO2, 62. It's high. High. Look at the PaO2, though. 212. Yeah. Hey, how can you get above 100%? It's not, not a percent. It's not a percent. It's, a it's not a percent. It's a number. It's 212, so it's, it's extremely double, high. Extremely high. And the, the uh, bicarb is, what did you say the range was, bicarb? It's like 22 to 24. Um, 28. Or, yeah, bicarb, 21, 21 to, 28. to 28. So bicarb is up, too. So it's... Yeah. So it's... <clears throat> Going back to our rules. I, sure, I always used to remember bicarb is, since it's the word bi, if it's in the 20s. So if it starts with a 2, then you're okay. So if, like, if it's 21, 28, basically if it's somewhere in the 20s, then you're probably okay if it's for the bicarb. Okay. So alkalotic, CO2 is high, O2 is high, bicarb is high. So are we going to go with, what do you think, Paul? Compensated or, or uncompensated, respiratory or metabolic is going to be the question. Is it bad that the O2, PaO2 is that high? It is very bad. Well, I'm 26. If it's that high, I would just, uh, this is guessing, I would say compensated is that definitely ruled out because if it was compensated, it wouldn't be that high. But I may be wrong. So the answer they're going with is a partially compensated metabolic alkalosis. The reason they say so is because the gap, you've got the alkalosis component going on with the pH, yes. However, the O2 and the CO2 are trying to balance out the bicarb because the bicarb shows that it's a metabolic component going on. So the O2 is trying to balance out the bicarb. So that's where they're coming up with partially compensated metabolic alkalosis. You see what I mean about these things? Mm -hmm. They're so cool though. And the rationale it gives is it shows a metabolic etiology without adequate respiratory compensation but attempted compensation is what it tells us. Cool. So if it was, uh, if the pH was lower. As in normal or as I'm Not in, the pH, I'm sorry, the car bicarbonate was lower. If the bicarbonate was normal, normal or, or lower. Then it would be a compensated, compensated metabolic alkalosis. If the O2 was lower, it would be a compensate, it would be a compensated. The bicarb and the O2 were lower. Okay. Because in order for it to be compensated, it's got to be somewhat balanced out. And right now, the ions are not balanced out. All right, see, I'm losing you on the ions being balanced out. So Where are you counting your ions? CO2 is negative. Okay. O2 is positive. Positive. HCO3 is negative. So you have an kind you have a high kind of negative, which was the HCO3. You have a super high positive O2. Where it's trying to balance it out. Does that make sense? But those numbers should not would not necessarily equal each other. They don't have to equal each other, no. It's just like in the scheme of the balancing scale. They kinda the positive outweighs the negative. 
Does that kind of make sense? That's the big thing about it is the chemistry of it. I think that's why I like it too, but it's just the chemistry trying to fix itself with the body. So when the pH drops and it becomes acidotic, meaning there's too much negative going on, it tries to balance with something alkalotic. Alkalotic being positive, alkalotic being the, um, the O2 and all that. So. And bicarb is considered a negative ion. Twenty-seven. I know twenty-six. I think we did twenty-six. Twenty-seven is cool. These two are different because they're not. It's interpreting the blood gas, but it's interpreting it to determine what the patient's condition would be. All right, your pH is a little bit high. Slightly high, yes, because it should be seven point four five. Yeah. Your PaCO two is low. Your PaO two is low. And your bicarb is normal. So what patient presentation would cause a low O2 and a low CO2? I'm going to go... Well, and see here... I'm going to... Okay. I'm going to go with the benzo overdose because... If it were diabetic ketoacidosis, the bicarbonate would be off too. Because the diabetic ketoacidosis affects metabolism. Well, it's, and it's, and with DKA, DKA they'd, be they'd be hyper. <laughs> they'd be hyperventilating. Right. So the, the alcohol. And I'm trying to do these with you. Alcohol also. is alcohol is sugars. The steam inhalate the steam inhalation injury. All right, the steam inhalation injury. I, I could see it causing the CO two to be low, and the actually well, it could cause, it could cause both to be low because it would affect the alveoli's ability to transfer oxygen and carbon dioxide, but I would have suspect that you would see an increase in CO2 in the blood and a decrease in O2 in the blood. See, I'm agreeing with you. I think there's some sort of hypoventilation going on here. It's just trying to figure out what's causing the hypoventilation. We've ruled out DKA because that's a hyperventilation problem. Benzos I could see being a hypoventilation as well. Steam ventilation injury, I would, I would see the CO2 being higher because you'd be retaining that in the blood because you're not able to um, exchange it for oxygen. I can see the low, the low respiratory is causing the, the, the O2 to be low because mm -hmm. you're not getting enough oxygen in. Your body's creating the CO2 as a byproduct of cellular metabolism. So, but your CO2 is low also, which means that all your systems are depressed. It kind of makes me lean towards steam thinking that something is going on to cause everything to slow. I'm going to go with steam. But with steam, your metabolism would still be up. And therefore, you would still be doing cellular respiration and you would still be producing CO2. This is a complete slowdown. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I got to pick up a doghouse tonight, so I need space. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. I still, I don't know, something tells me it's not Benzo. All something. right, I'm going with Benzo. You're going with Steam. Let's see who's Tom, running. Tom, what are you going with? I'm going with alcohol. Okay. And I haven't done these, by the way. That's why I'm trying to talk them through. Um, we're on 27. D. Steam. Okay. I can it, see that. It says an uncompensated respiratory alkalosis, <clears throat> quite likely caused by hypoxia. Well, the Did benzos you just could highlight each one of these questions, or what's that yellow stripe on the side? I highlighted the ones that were pertinent. Some of these questions aren't actually pertinent to what we were doing in class. Oh, I got you. Like, and by the way, I was leaning towards the steam, but since both y'all chose two things, like I this, I didn't think it. this is a good question, 
but it didn't have anything to do with interpreting blood gases necessarily. It's like how to figure out what a potassium level would be. I was like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how the hell we're going to go over that in class right now. So we're going to skip that. That's what we got, Sam. Number one. Yeah. Number one. The fastest, fastest physiological mechanism for acid based correction is the respiratory system. Agreed. Okay. I like that answer. Let's skip that. Clip. No. The renal? Bicarb buffer. Bicarb buffer. It's an instantaneous system that manages acid base derangement. It's also easily overwhelmed. The next facet would be respiratory, then renal, and then phosphate. This is where the pH and the ions comes into play. pH is a calculation of hydrogen ions. So I'm yeah. reconsidering taking my FPC level. Partial hydrogen. Yeah. Well, no, it's, yes, it is partial hydrogen. Um, why would you reconsider it? Because I think I'm going to bomb the test. It's hard. metabolism. All right. Aerobic metaboliz metabolism. Metabolism. Shut up. I was copying Paul, okay? <laughs> Metabol. And aerobic uses oxygen. I'm going to go with adenosine triphosphate because that's ATP. Yes, it is. Tom, did you lock my car? Mm -hmm. Why did Probably. you lock my car? <laughs> because your car should always be locked. Well, I the don't... back, no, the back. The back door. Door was what? unlocked. No, it doesn't lock. Of, it doesn't lock? Okay. I'm locked. You gotta figure that's the one that's exactly. Yep. Oh, that's fine. And I didn't even open that door. Well, that's fine. Well, that's fine. Thank you so much, Kayla. Oh, I guess that's your. And favorite. actually. Aerobic and anaerobic metabolism both produce ATP, but, but ATP. ATP is produced at a rate of 28 units with aerobic metabolism and only produced at a rate of 3 with anaerobic. And anaerobic also creates lactate. Yep. So. Mm. Are we right? Mm -hmm. Pri all right. Primary met metabolic byproducts of aerobic metabolism are D. CO2 and water? Yeah. Correct. Well, actually, yeah. That is correct. I just checked the answer. The anaerobic primary. The anaerobic would be, would be the lactate. Would be yeah. the lactate. Yeah. Right. So I had to think about it for a second there. This one's really hard. The Bohr effect. The Bohr effect. I have no idea. I it has to do with the effect. oxygen disassociation curve, which is how easy the oxygen binds to the hemoglobin. However, I don't know what the Bohr effect is. I'm going to say. Oh hell! Hold hey. on! Don't go! Don't! 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 Yes! Hold on! What? I'm reading it. Google is great, and Wikipedia is okay for this. <laughs> okay, so the Bohr effect. See, look, I said it has to do with oxygen binding affinity. Is it da, 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 da. Oxygen's affinity, hemoglobin's oxygen affinity. Inversely related to both the acidity and concentration of carbon dioxide. Since carbon dioxide re reacts with water to form carbonic acid, increased CO2 result bleh, in decreased blood pH, resulting hemoglobin proteins releasing their load of oxygen. Contra conversely, decreased CO2 provokes an increase in pH and results in the hemoglobin picking up more oxygen. I didn't know if you could read that all the way up there, that little print. That's all good? So I think the answer then is going to be A. Uh, occurs as a result of CO2? No. No. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. It's the primary mechanism which prompts the unloading of oxygen at the tissue level. <clears throat> yeah. And then it's got a really long paragraph about it, which is also listed. You'll get to read it on the share drive. There's 
rescue shop. The rescue shop. Oh. This book is published. Okay. All right. We did number five. Number fourteen. These are. It does jump around because a lot of these, like I said, are not. Majority of the CO2 in, what is that? The majority of CO2 is transported. Oh. Um, it's the plasma. And the car. No, bound to the hemoglobin. hemoglobin. Yeah, it's a carbonic. It's it, a carb. The hemoglobin. I, know, no, I, was just reading, no, I was reading the book. Oh, oh, I was I about to say. read it because of the oh. flare. It's going to be, it's going to be the one, it's going to be the, the hemoglobin. Uh, because oxygen trades off with carbon dioxide in the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin carries oxygen and carbon dioxide. But then it turns into bicarb. In the... I'm going with B. Are you going, what are you going with? B, D, C? None of us were talking about A as albumin, so. I'll agree with you, Paul. Okay. Because well, you don't have free CO2 in the plasma. But the answer is C. It's transported by every means listed there. However, the majority of it is bicarb. Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> because the product of aerobic metabolism is water and CO2. So water, bicarb, H2O, plus the CO2 makes the bicarb. Bicarb. All right. The relationship of entitled CO2 to PaCO2. The end tidal is lower than the CO2. I'm going with D. <laughs> um, you just said they're not the same. They're not the same. They're definitely not the same, so we can rule out A. But there is a relationship there. The CO2. Well, yeah. I would the say. The PCO2 and the. They are, they're the same level. What did you say the normal range for PaCO2 is? Isn't it 35 to 45 one? It is, so that's the partial pressure of the 35 to 45, and we all know that the, the end title is 35 to 45. Then I'm going with A. I'm going with B. Just because. Thomas, really? All right, I'll go C. And it's B. Because technically, I the ETO, ETCO, the end title can never be higher because the pressure gradient would dictate that CO2 moves into the plasma, but it can never completely equalize due to the diffusion has to be slightly off. Right, the pressure has to be less, so there has to be, so, so the end title CO2 is lower because of gas exchange in the pressure inside the body. Ooh, I like this one. As PO, PaCO2 okay. decreases by 10 millimeters of mercury, what would you expect, what would you anticipate? The, the pH decreases 0 0.8. I'll give you that. Because as part of the blood gas analysis to determine if it's chronic or acute, if it's an acute, these are for acid. It decreases by 0 0.8 units for every 10 of the CO2. So the PCO2 decreases. So we know it's going to be... Wait a minute. Put that back up for a second. This shows if it's an acute process or if it's a chronic process. If it's respiratory, it's 0 0.8 for increase. Because you do have those chronic COP doers, and they compensate very well. And that's how you can tell if they're Oh, okay. So different. it's 0.8... For Content. every 10 millimeters of CO2. Yeah. Either way. Either way. It's just the, P the pH will increase if it's alkalotic, and it'll decrease if it's acidotic. Right. Which means it'll increase for acid and decrease right. for alkalotic. So the pH should behave the same way the PaCO2 is. So if the PaCO2 goes up, the pH should go up. If the pH goes up the PaCO2 should go up yes that does that does make sense yes I had to confirm it because you worded it differently than I did so the answer is going to be C or D the question is the potassium and I have no freaking but idea. potassium is positive and yes. you said CO2 is negative so the PCO2 is decreasing I would so think the C. potassium would increase 
the body's trying to do, yeah, do its thing. It's. Wait a minute, wait a minute. pH decrease of 0.08. The, yeah, the, that is. So we're saying. But that's CO, PaCO2, and we're talking about potassium. Yeah, they're and related. Potassium is positive. This one says it decreases by 10. This oh. one says it decreases by 10. Okay, so yeah. So the pH would increase. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Oh, that's why didn't you say something? Well, I, you were jumping up forth fast. Nothing. I'm sorry. So it's going to be A or B yeah. because the pH is going to increase because the PaCO2 is going down. So CO2 pH goes, goes down. PH, PaCO2 goes down by 10. And the pH will go up to make it at alkalotic. The acid's going away, the alkalotic's going up. So, yeah, the pH would go up 0.8 and... And I would think if it goes up, that would decrease the potassium 0.5. I like the logic there. So we're saying B. Because the the, the PaCO2, you said PaCO2 is negative. PaCO2 is negative, correct. Right? Correct. So if that decreases and it increases your pH, CO2 is negative. If things have to equal out, if you have to have equal shifts, they try to equal out. They don't have. Then to I would try. say that you would have a if you have a decrease in PaCO2, which is negative, you would have an increase in potassium, which is positive. Okay, so you're going with A. I think I'm going to go with B because the pH is increasing, which makes it more positive, and this is already positive, so I think this is going to decrease. So I'm going to go with B. Tom? Don't just guess for the hell of it. I'm going with B. Okay, you're going with B. So you and... Okay. It says B. It says it's well established into estimating your effects on pH and K as you manip manipulate the PCO2. As long as the hemodynamics are consistent, changes to the end title should be the same as the CO2. So if, when this changes, the end tidal changes. Okay, so... And then if, as you drop the end tidal, you can anticipate the... What? This is 16. Same section. Yeah, that's the same question. That just doesn't make any sense logically. So read, read, read it again. Read it again. Here, read the formula right there in bold. And that's what it's trying to explain. Oh. 16. That's what it's trying to do. Okay. Explain. The relationship was to keep in mind as long as your hemodynamics are consistent, changes in end tidal CO2 should affect almost identically the PaCO2. Note I said, oh, the change is identical, not the value. Your end tidal CO2 is 45 and your PaCO2 is 50. You drop your end tidal CO2 to 35, you should anticipate a drop of 10 points as well or PAC2 of 40, they would both drop 10 millimeters. All right? And then it's saying that the potassium decreases because the pH increases, doesn't it? Isn't that in the little formulas right there in bold? If you drop the CO2, then the pH increases. All right, a pH, a change of pH of 0.1 Changes causes. I'm, I'm assuming the double the equals mark with an arrow at the end of it is causes a change. Correct. And delta is a change in Correct. potassium. That means that the chemical reaction occurred and that the change took place well, see, in that direction. Because what you said earlier, the the flip back to your notes page. All right, on that right, right there, that what you said. You wrote this. You wrote this out. This first one. Mm -hmm. PaCO2 10 millimeters, pH uh, 0 0.08. Mm -hmm. So if the PAC2. So does this up down arrow thing mean they do the opposites? The up down arrow is the. It's another symbol for chemical reaction. 
Well, because if it so is, if, if, if it's it, up down though, it's. I don't think it means the same as side to side, meaning it can go either way. Well, no. See, what I'm saying is, is if I'm reading, if you've got that right, if you've got that right up there, mm -hmm. this equation says PaCO2 10 millimeters of mercury. D equals with an arrow going sideways. pH will go up or down. 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Dependent, and it's an, it's an opposite. Well, then that, that same one would say that if the pH goes up 0 0.1, then the potassium would change 0 0.6. Well, what would the potassium change if the pH changes? I'm just saying that this equation says that if if this equation means what you wrote up there, then to, to copy it over into this equation, because I don't know what that symbol means, would say that a pH change of 0.1 is equal to a potassium change. The equal with the arrow on top, is that the symbol you're saying you don't understand what it means? No, these two, this up down. Plus or minus. I think it, that should mean that it'll go up or down. But that doesn't make any sense because this is specifically stating okay. pH increase in yeah, uh, hold on, hold on. Listen, listen. Your your what you wrote up there says if the pH changes, all right, point eight. If the pH goes down point eight, the uh, PaCO two will go up ten, right, and vice versa. Well, that's what this equation says okay if that's what that if that if you if that's what this equation says mm -hmm. is written out like that mm -hmm. then this equation would say that the ph changes 0.1 the potassium changes inversely 0.6 i gotcha that makes sense now because you're saying if the paco2 and changes 10 the pH inversely changes 0.8. Correct. And then the count, the potassium changes inversely 0.6. That makes sense. Yeah. So, put PaCO2 changes, your pH will change inversely for every 10 millimeters of pH change. I mean, 10 millimeters of PaCO2 change, you will ha inversely have a change of 0.8 of pH. I'm yes. sorry, 0.08. Correct. Of pH. I would hope not 0 0.8. That's, yeah, 0 .8. that's bad. But if you have a 0 0.1 change in pH, you will inversely have the potassium change of potassium 0.06. change of 0 0.6. 0.6, not 0 0.06, 0 0.6. 0 0.6. Okay. So the CO2 and potassium go in the same direction, pH goes in the opposite. Is that the quick? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm reading. Yeah. Right. So then we go back to that question. So six, eight, and ten potassium. We go now, does that question? PH and, we so said the pH B goes down by ten. Yeah. So, the pH so will then go that's up. what makes B the right answer. So we worked through that the long way around the horn. We did, but that's the point of this: is to learn this stuff because okay. it's really hard. This is really hard. So there is it's so cool though. Is, isn't potassium? Doesn't that contribute towards? Doesn't the increase in potassium contribute towards acidity? But potassium's a no, positive pot pot ion. Potassium would the higher the potassium level, the more alkalotic you would be. Okay. No, no, you're right. I was saying you, because that's the flip that if you flipped that equation over, if your potassium went up 0 0.06, your pH would go down or become more acidic yeah. by point one. Yeah, that's what I was saying is potassium and carbon dioxide are both would indicate or would be basically would push numbers towards the acid or uh, towards the acid end as they increase and the alkal uh, alkaline end as they decrease. And ah uh, ha ha the third equation PaCO2 of 10 equals a change of 0.5 in your potassium. <laughs> I hadn't gotten that far yet. There's so much. And E N T N title CO Oh no 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 no! Because what you what we've said earlier, that so that's what that little symbol means. The plus or minus. No 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 no. Go right on this. This little symbol right here, the half of an infinity symbol. The fish. 
the fish, the backwards fish. What the hell is the backwards fish mean? The, the Jesus fish. This fish means that their relative, that because like it said earlier, uh, if end tidal CO2 changes in in end tidal CO2, if your hemodynamics are stable and consistent, changes made in end tidal CO2 should reflect almost identically to PaCO2. This says delta in ETCO2, the fish symbol, delta PaCO2. So the change in one is relative, is, to is, relative is, is equal. Value won't be the same, but the amount of change will be the same. Gotcha. So 10 millimeters of, of, P, of PaCO2 will be the same, will be 0.5 of potassium. So if PaCO2 goes up 10 millimeters, potassium will go up 10, uh, 0.5. If PaCO2 goes down 10, potassium will, potassium will go down 0.5. Mm -hmm. That is so much complicated math. Well, that is chemistry right there. It is, but it is like, it is mind-blowing of how our bodies work. I just got to learn these damn symbols. I need to buy this damn book. That's oh. all there is to it. Okay. Uh, next. All right. What's uh, the next one we're doing? 18. 18. You got the book, so don't cheat and look. Oh, I'm not even. Patience ABGs. No. Oh, what's the last thing say? 51. Tor. Tor. Okay. This, is, right. where, this right. is where this book just. Oh, right, and here's a test tip. That was a test tip. Yeah. The test tips are cool. They're, oh, and a vast ma random. test tip. A vast majority of CO2 is transported in the in the plasma as hot as bicarbonate. Patients ABGs. The pH is seven point three six. All right. What we what, what we're what we're looking up? Uh, Google is our friend. Remember that. What are we looking up? Chemistry symbols. No. T O O. Oh, it's T O R R. Yep. Tor. Oh, tor. Yeah, it's a pressure. Tor is a pressure it's a unit of measure in partial vacuums equal to 133.32 pal, uh, pascals. The difference between tor and millimeters of mercury. Here we go. So in other words, that's just a measurement of partial pressure. Yeah. According to the present okay. definition, tor and differ, though slightly. Oh, that didn't help me none. Uh, just type in the... Uh, ah, there we go. Tori, yeah, there you go. Okay. Tor is the difference in one millimeter of mercury or one tor. Look, conversion of measurement units. It's like the second link. There you go. Look at that. We well, have yeah, it. That, it's backwards, so go click back and do the other one. There was two of them. Yeah, but this Tor is, to millimeter mercury. Okay, so according to this definition right here, one millimeter mercury and one Tor as, is less than one part in seven million. So they're not exactly a right... They're not exactly alike, but one tor and one millimeter mercury are s within s one seven millionth of being equal. Super close. Yeah. Gotcha. So we've got a so pH not, of so, so close. Don't even worry about the difference. Of seven point yeah. three six, which is normal. Yeah. A PaCO two. One, one point high. One point. You're correct. That's right. I forgot about that because it's seven point three five. Good call. So it's I'm learning stuff. It's slightly alkalotic, very slightly. PaCO2 is 55. So it's inside. It's one point. All right, PaCO2 51 torr. 35 to 45. PaCO2. So then, it, yeah, it is normal, Paul. It is normal. It's 7.35 is the bare minimum. Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh yeah, yeah, right. P pH is normal. The CO2 is high because it's at 51. The O2 is high because it's at 104. The bicarb is high because it's at 27. But it's high. They're not like, oh my god, high, but they're high. Yeah, and I was saying none of these are like blowing my skirt up here. Yeah. <laughs> blowing your skirt up. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, the ventilator has been managing the patient in transport for 45 minutes, and the end title, which was 44, uh, is showing 35. What on earth, Bob? All the hemodynamic parameter without change from your initial assessment. Which of the following would you anticipate? You would anticipate which of the following? Either way. They what is PIO2? Um, Inhaled oxygen? Where are you coming up with this chart? Partial inspiration? What? I put in PACO2 of 51 torr. Yeah, which tells you that it's five, six points too high. ABG. Yeah. It's 6.117th of a millionth too high. Yeah. So, barely high, <coughs> barely high CO2. Barely high O2. Barely high O2. Barely high bicarb. No, it's in southern normal range. Oh, it was 25. Oh. No, it's 28. Never mind. <coughs> normal pulse ox. And basically all it is is the ETCO2 dropped nine points. So before, so going the, and, yeah, it was 40, 44 to 35, and the PCO2 was 51. So I would, you can anticipate them to drop similarly. But not exactly. All right, your ventilator, PACO2, 51. And I don't think the patient's going to all of a sudden become acidotic. I can. I think we can rule out the CO2 pH. is 44. Your ventilator has been. Your ventilator has managed, has been managing the patient trans, in transport for 45 minutes, and now your entitled CO2 is showing 35. All other heat of dark, without change from your initial system. You would expect the pop, the, you anticipate the pop. Uh, referring back to our PACO2. And, and your PACO, okay, he, here's what we said earlier. The, PACO2 mm -hmm. and P, and end title CO2 will change the same. They won't be the same value. But they'll be really close. But they'll change the same amount. And that's what we were talking through. So the, we the PACO2 a. went from 51. This is, this is a big, long, like, drawn out, lots and lots of words. Thrown that's why they're giving you all the stupid stuff like the PAO2 and the SAO2 yeah, and all that and stuff. Yeah, and the answer is But you, went, really went, went, is, from, you went from 44 to 35, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's all, which would that's mean all that's a nine-point change, so 51 to 42. Two. Yeah, which is answer D. Yeah. So it's just a big long question to ask you. One so we write Paul? Simple thing. Is it D? I don't know. I don't know. So 18? Yeah, 18. Is it D? No, I don't want to feel like an idiot. But, you know. 18. It's D. It yeah. is D? Yeah, D. look at that. Assuming there is no change in hedonic status, as stated, the changes in end tidal CO2 will be reflected in PaCO2. Dropping the PaCO2 would increase the pH, not drop it. Dropping the PaCO2 by 9 wouldn't have any appreciable effect on the PAO2 or the SAO2. Okay. So, so yeah, it was what we referred to earlier. Okay. I found that chart. That is cool. That's the same chart that I handed you on the cheat sheet too. Yeah, but so. this has got both arterial and venous gases. Huh. It does. Do you know the difference and why there's a difference between arterial and venous? Because venous is already offloaded at the cell, so the values are going to be slightly lower yep. and higher and all that. Okay, good. That was something that was in the book, and they really drew it out, and they could have made it two sentences. All right. Well, the O2 wise, it's different. The but I like this cheat over here on the side. You can't really see it on the on the screen up here, but it says. Oh yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. It says pH elevated, more alkaline, higher pH with. Hyperventilation, anxiety, pain, anemia, shock, pulmonary disease, congestive heart failure, MIs, hypokalemia, decreased potassium, gastric suctioning with suctioning or vomiting, antacid and uh, administration and aspirin intoxication. And then pH is decreased and with... what did we say causes aspirin intoxication? Huh? You injected it to you? <laughs> Pepto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So an ABG with a pH of 7.29 is acidotic. The PCO2 is 18, which is low. The PO2 is high at 110, and the bicarb is low at 17. With these ABGs, you would expect to find which of the following. They're eliminating too much CO2. Um, They're not right at Nick. They're... God bless. What kind of... They're not hyperkalemic. All right, we're, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm, You're I'm sorry. We're on 19. So we've determined that the pH, they're acidotic with a low CO2, a high O2, and a low bicarb. Yeah. There. Okay, so it asks the questions out. in sections and then gives the answers in sections? Mm -hmm. And it gives the rationale behind the whole thing, too. Yeah, so and I'm not they're, sure. not, they're not going to be A because they're, they're blowing off CO2 too fast and they're getting too much oxygen. So they're rating fast, probably not slow. They're not going to be hyperkalemic because if they were hyperkalemic, they'd be more... Uh, I'd have to say hyponatremia, though, because they're not going to be alkalotic. Well, they're, they're acidotic. PaCO2 is low, PaO2 is high. They're so, long story short, CB's coming next week because I thought today was February 2nd and it's not. So, oh, so I didn't miss anything? No. The only thing we're doing is I'm teaching Paul how to interpret blood gases the best that I know. Teaching him? So, well, we're both teaching each other. It's a collective effort. <laughs> Y'all got both projectors? Yeah, we're doing pretty good today. Shoot. So to recap, we're doing we're doing the ASAP book practice questions. When you're right. interpreting an ABG, these are the six rules you go by. You That's start right. with is it acid, is it basic, is it respiratory or metabolic, and is it acute or chronic? And these rules are all So what would it say if it was a chronic? If it were chronic, this would not be the case. If they were chronic and the pH was like seven point four. 7.5, that's within normal parameters, right? No. Say the pH was 7.40, and their CO2 is like 65. Their CO2 is high, but their pH is within normal limits, which would show it's a chronic process, that their body chronically has a high CO2, but their pH is are, not increased. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. That made sense, doesn't it? What, it yeah, like their body's balanced out if, because if, it's always used what, to Yeah. Running. They're P, they're not they're not alkalotic or but or acidotic. Okay, I'm gonna make the argument that I'm gonna I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm right. just gonna make the argument of why that their pH would be it wouldn't this wouldn't be the case. I, but, but it said and I'm just going by this is that yeah. but about the changes. Yeah, but that's not an acute change. We're talking how to you just asked is it chronic or acute? And I'm saying this would make, this would be if it's acute. If it's chronic, this rule is not true. You'll notice it's not true. Their okay. pH will be within normal limits. Because if it's chronic, their, their body's going to have already evened itself on out. Like, it's going to even its pH out and everything eventually. So, like, if you had a So, like, the COPD, like COPD COPD COPDers, they're not, they're not chronically acidotic. Or they're not, like, chronically scary acidotic based on their CO2s. Okay. Their bodies compensate for it, and that's what it wants to do for the acute. So they, they're, but then, then, in other words, their their bicarbonate would always be high. Something, Probably. something's you, balancing. You've out. always got to have you, you. You can't put weight on one side of the scale and not put weight on the other side right. of the scale. Right. So yeah, that, to me, that sounds like yes, that would probably be the case. That so they would constantly run around hyperbicarbonate. Google's our friend. Yeah, Google a chronic. COPD blood gas. That'd be a good one to see. <coughs> okay, we're just doing. Let's just start collecting them in the ER. Actually, I have mine <coughs> from uh, last week. <coughs> really Question. scary. What yours? My blood gas because I had an asthma attack and they put me on BiPAP. Mm. Yeah. Um. Do you want to hear the numbers, Paul? Because I have it memorized. It was great. Mm -hmm. My pH was seven point five three. Yeah. Mm. My CO two was seventeen. This is that or send off? I think this was the send off. Okay. And then the um, the O2 was 25. Yeah, I didn't feel so good. My bacar was okay though. All right. So acute versus chronic acidosis. 
Here's what we just talked about. Chronic respiratory acidosis, the PaCO2 is elevated the upper limit of reference range with normal pH secondary to renal compensation and elevated serum bicarbonate. There you go. Okay. So the bicarb will be up and the CO2 will be up to kind of level each other out, but the pH won't be off. That's what we said, right? Yes. Okay. So... Respiratory acidosis is acute, acute or chronic. In acute respiratory acidosis, the pHCO2 elevated above the upper limit, an accompanying acidemia, pH above, uh, less pH less than 7.35. Chronic respiratory acidosis, the pHCO2 will be elevated with the near normal secondary pH and elevated serum bicarb. Okay. Okay. So, so okay. the body. So I left out the part about the bicarb, but yeah. now, but now we're cool. We're on the same page. Yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. That's, yeah. Because that's that was what I was trying. Because that's the one thing that that I've learned about all this is, if you change one, it's going to change another. Yeah. And it's either going to be a, a, a like with the end tidal CO2 versus the PaCO2, it's going to be a similar change. Or it's going to be an inverse change. Yeah. So let's go back and do one or two of these with Scott real quick, and we'll show him what we learned. What are those yellow things? Those are the questions I highlighted to do because they're relevant to blood gases. Oh, you actually highlighted the book. Well, I highlighted it on my phone because it was like 30 pages, and not all of these were relevant. Oh. Like, we just learned this a few minutes ago about the potassium and relationship to CO2 and it's really hard and I didn't think it was relevant but it actually kind of is so <laughs> now that we know what it is I'm just it's saying, point 0.5 it's point 0.5 point 0.1 change in pH equals a point f 0.5 change in potassium I thought that's a test question hold on say that again <laughs> it is a Here, test question and it's in the point, book point and, I, and I made a point, copy of it for you point guys point 0.8 or point 0.08 six. Six. a point 0.1 no the PaCO2 change of 10. The 6, 8, and 10, I remember that. The PaCO2 change of 10. Mm -hmm. Here, just write down uh, page. That, let me just take a picture. Page is this a black book? Yeah. 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 It's this test tip right here. What page is it? 53. So for every 10, 10 millimeters of mercury of change in your PaCO2, you'll have a pH change of 0 0.08. So if this goes up 10, this goes down 0 0.08. All right, for every 0 0.1 change in your pH, you have a inverse change of 0 0.6 in your potassium. So these three were ones that we were practicing on to determine, the yeah, this is what we've been doing for the past hour. And there's cupcakes, by the way. There's spice cakes. Hey, let me go clock out real quick. Yeah. And, Erica, I wasn't trying to argue no, with you. I was good. trying to get to understand it. You're good. It is hard. She's used to me arguing with her all the time. It's okay. That's because you yell at me about everything. Yeah. I mean, hard to corn. You'd learn how to drive. I'll say, if you'd learn how to drive, then you have no problem. Oh so, my gosh, like today they pulled the ambulance and straight to the ambulance van. I was like, do y'all need some help? Was your patient dying? Yeah. Oh, I'm pulling in. Taking in three spots. So I kind of thought today was the second that I thought CB was teaching, so I didn't prepare anything for today. I just brought the case study in the That would make sense because I was like, hey, big mama, I'll see you tonight. And she was like, oh, you will. Are you bring your roof. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, um. Should I? Do you like roses? She's like, well, if you're coming over, I was like, that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely misscheduled, so that was my bad. Oh. It happens. I'm human. So we were just, he asked what I had ready to go. Where, is that from the um, this ACE is, book? Yes, this is from ASAT. This is the literal test questions. I took like 10 pages of them and put them up. So are they like... They're hard. Separated into like... Modules, yeah. Modules. We kept, they kept saying 0.8. Is it 0.8 or 0.08? 0.08. 0.08. 
point oh eight. Okay, that's what I thought. That's a I think you have written nine on your little other thingy. It's point oh eight on the other thing too. Oh, nope, that's why it's like because I don't think that ten millimeters of mercury difference on that is gonna. It's point oh eight. Point oh eight. Point oh eight. So a PaCO two change of ten causes the pH to go up or down. Point oh eight. If it's a acute thing like right now, not the chronic COPD. That's what we were discussing. Okay, that part. The CO2 and so the, the steps when you interpret a blood gas, Scott, you start with is it out acid or is it base? Mm -hmm. You start with the next question, is it metabolic, meaning the bicarb change? Is that the one you emailed out? Um, yeah. I think I printed it to the data room. Is it bicarb changes, meaning metabolic or respiratory? The thing we're talking about with the pH is how to determine if it's acute and it's a problem right now or if they're chronically like that. And if it's metabolic, is the respiratory compensating by changing up the CO2? You know how, um, like, sodium is positive, chloride is negative? and they should be within this normal range and everything equals out in the body, <coughs> that's the anion gap. When they don't add up, that's how you end up with an anion gap. Positive and negatives don't equal out. That's how you end up with pH is up and down and everything positive, negative. So that's what anion gap is. A delta gap is something that you only calculate and deal with is It'll tell you if there's more than one problem going on with the patient. But it's something we don't routinely calculate. Why not? Because it's a change in bicarb plus a change in, what was it? The anion gap. And it just tells you if a bunch is going on. Because it's something that they're going to do in like the ICU for like a long-term care thing. It's not going to be something that we can deal with like in the spot. We can't fix like six problems going on. It's kind of just helpful to know that yeah, it's, they're it's really more life better come in. Yeah, we got this 50 year old. She got a delta gap. Y'all better be ready. <laughs> so these are the rules for interpreting. Did you send blood. us that? I did. And it's okay. on the share drive. Okay, so let's see. This came from a Fundamentals of Critical Care book, and it's also listed in Critical Care Transport. And I added notes from the RT that she did on that class that I took. So Is that the Fundamentals of Critical Care? I signed up for that class. It's really good. You when get to keep that? the book. They do it like throughout the year. Yeah, who's on Cornerstone? Um, Mark Hamill, one of the physicians over there, the internal surgeons. Big H teases yeah. Well, yeah. Um, uh, a bunch of us are going in March. It's really good. The only thing about it is the antibiotic section is kind of hard. The answer to all those questions, by the way, is assume it's resistant and treat it like it's resistant. <laughs> the answer. No, That's. So since this is all we're talking about tonight, it's just kind of basics of interpretation. Is that a Carillion, like, is that a, they came up with a curriculum class, or is that like something it's, outside that they It's teach? an outside. Yeah. And it's like a national accrediting thing. But so it's, what do you get for that? Like, you get a certificate that they sign, and you get a little, uh, like, ACLS card. What's it called again? Fundamentals of Critical Care. Do you know who does it, though? I think it's a FCCS. Fundamental Critical Care Society. I'm not kidding. Like it's on the bottom of the book. So is it like, does it go through everything or just like? It goes through like uh. vent settings. It goes through shock. It goes through sepsis. It goes through antibiotic therapies. How long is this class? It's, it's like two a two-day, day, like sixteen-hour course. Well, I don't have two days. <laughs> There's no way. It's, it's, hard. Hard. it's hard. It's hard. So we'll do these with you, Scott. Do you test out of it? Yeah, yes. you, get, you test it. Test and a post test and reading. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Scott, twenty-four. Oh lord. You've got your cheat sheet right here in front of you too, by the way. So you're good. There it's is. on the bottom. There's the class right there. Yeah. Is that the one you're doing? The registration's closed though, because they met. They have to mail you your book, and you get to keep the book. Yeah, the registration for the class yeah, is this week. It's a in February, mm -hmm. it's closed. I'm going to the one in March. Are you? What day is it? March what? 16th and 17th. Get off that downside. You probably could take it, but they make you pay for it. Yeah, they probably won't make them a lot of money to do it. If they give you the textbook, it's probably There's art. 
Yeah, yeah me, Tyler Art, Ford. Tyler, and... Oh, Jason's taking it, too. Me, Art, Tyler, and Jason signed up for it the other day. Oh, it's, it's a good class. Who's in the class? If you click on the class, yeah. I liked it. It was a good class. <laughs> you may not be able to. I'm an instructor, so I have instructor access to... You can click on it and see see the class, but not the class roster. I have instructor access to... Uh, Cornerstone? Cornerstone. All right, Scott, 24. You're uh, on the spot. Your pH is 7.36, normal or abnormal? So that's abnormal. No. 7.45. Oh, 3. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah, you're that's good. Fine. Just kidding. It's you're good. It's technically two, it's technically two 10 hour days. Two 10 hour days? There's no way. But they cater your breakfast and lunch, by the way. They cater. Me in with food? They cater a box <laughs> lunch like for uh, a, box lunch. <laughs> a box lunch from some fancy deli, and for breakfast they did quiches. It's not, it's not McAllister's. Really I don't know, but they gave me this thing and I didn't know what it was, and it came with everything. Did you eat it? Yeah. It was probably from the cafeteria. No, it wasn't from the cafeteria. It was from from fancy no, place. It's, like, tied it's a, uh, what's your face? They tied a bow up on top. Yeah, of it. it's it's a a, uh, a caterer. They get a caterer. Did you get paid for this? Yeah. Well, no, I didn't get paid for it, but I didn't have to pay to take it. Her definition of fancy is not really that okay, high well, of a standard. Like, that's, why I, that's why I date her. Ooh. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to impress her. Again. Oh, yeah, she's she's had Chef Boyardee like three times this week. I'm going to get the ER to pay she me to come to the class. All right. <laughs> All right 7.36 so is normal. Your PaCO2 is 28. Normal or abnormal? Um. Wait a minute. Which is that? The PaCO2? This is the one we've already done. Yeah, we're going back and doing one with Scott. So, which one are we doing? We're doing 24. 24. Pitch. I mean, I guess it's up there. But it's pH is normal. pH is normal. PACO2 is low. 35 to 45. P Your PAO2 should be 80 to 100, and it's 90, so it's fine. So I would expect his end tidal CO2 to be about 25 or 26. Yeah. So... I learned something. <laughs> See? And his bicarb is low. So Scott, But his PAO, PAO2 and SAO2 do not correlate. No, they do not. One is a saturation percent and the other is a partial pressure. So, Scott, is it acidotic or alkalotic or normal? I don't have a clue. You do. You I just don't. said it. All right. First question you got to ask yourself. All first right. question you got to ask yourself. Is it acid? Is it, is it acid? Ad, 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 acidotic or alkalotic? All right. So what's normal? Thirty-five to forty-five. And is it normal? All right. So that's normal. Okay. So it's not acidotic. It's not. Well, we're talking about pH. You just said thirty-five to forty-five for the CO two. No, 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 no. I know what he meant. Seven point three five to seven point four five. Thirty-five gotcha. to forty-five. For so this. he's not either acidotic or alkalotic. Right. But his CO two is off. His O2 is normal, and his bicarb is high or low. There's a cheat sheet in front of you. On the very bottom are the blood gases. So that is low, is what I thought. Mm -hmm. All right. And Paul, you have the answers now, so. This should be the which one is this, 24? Yeah. So, so is it metabolic <coughs> or respiratory? This one's hard. All right, so if they're metabolically acidotic, they're going to be. It's a metabolic because the bicarb is off. Right. Is the respiratory trying to compensate for the bicarb? Did you tell them the cheat that you told us? No. Which cheat? Is if it's the CO2 is off. Then it's respiratory? It's respiratory. And if the bicarb is it's off, off, it's metabolic. And metabolic trumps respiratory. All right, so say the name if the CO2 is off. It's respiratory. It's right here. I probably should have read that. You're good. If it's metabolic, the, the bicarb is off, and that trumps. If it's respiratory, the CO2 is off. So if your bicarb's off, it, it's it's going to be... It's metabolic. Uh, and then if the CO2 is off as well, then it's respiratory trying to compensate for the metabolic. And respiratory trumps metabolic. Yeah. No. no metabolic. metabolic trumps respiratory. Yeah. If, the, if they're both off, that's trying to compensate. So we just gave you the answer for this one. 
this is off and this is off, so it's trying to compensate, so it's a partially compensated uh -uh. metabolic. It's not. No, or no. it's a compensated. It's I'm compensated. sorry. It's a compensated, it's compensated. recipe. The because between, the pH is normal. Right. The yeah. difference between compensated and partially compensated is a change in pH. And the pH is normal. So it's a compensated respiratory. See, if it's compensating, then that means it's working. Are you sure it's B, not D? Number 18? I'm sorry. 24. 24. We give you the answers? 24, 24 is D. 24 is D. The pH That's what I was going to say. You said B, and I was like, it's not respiratory. It's no, metabolic. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. So it is it, D. It it's is D. Metabolic because the All black right, The difference off. between partially compensated and compensated is? The pH. The pH. Which is normal, except there's a right. shadow on there, but okay. Right. And it's metabolic because the bicarb is off, but it's compensated because the respiratory is off, too. And the respiratory is trying to compensate, and it's doing and pretty CO2 good. And your CO2 is down. Why is your CO2 down? Because it's compensating. Because the bicarb's up. Because it's acidosis. Right. Because this is a negative. This is where the, the ions come into play. This is negative. This is positive. Right. So I have a question that well, it's kind of related to this. It's okay. Go so ahead. you know how you've always heard, like, if they're metabolically acidotic, they're respiratory alkalotic? And vice versa? Not necessarily the case. Well, Not 100% the, true. There was a question and it said, when, what is the... Exception? You're thinking of from like PHTLS, where they talk, talk about if you're in metabolic acidosis, you're going to be in respiratory alkalosis because your body is trying to compensate. But it's not always the case and it's yeah. not like... It's one of those so like... what are the exceptions? I mean, it would be case by case. Oh, no, and I'm thinking of if your if your metabolic acidosis, your respiratory rate goes down. If your metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, your respiratory rate goes up. Uh, yeah. And then the the that's that that one test question that throws everybody off. I gotcha. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's like metabolic acidosis. Yeah, and I got a chart in here somewhere. In AMLS. I think it's an AMLS too, but no, that's aspirin poisoning, which also happens. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that three times. Wait, what? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Inject yourself with Pepto Bismol. Oh, that's his boss. I've heard of this. That's yeah. his training coordinator. Yep, that's one of the guys I work with. Mm. Here it is. Believe it or not, he's actually an incredible, incredibly smart medic and flies with us on our Neo team. <laughs> But he injected himself with Pepto Bismol. Thomas. Yeah, well, you know. That's so why here's I, the tables, Paul, that's why I left or his not Tama, uh, Paul. Yeah. It's in the book right there too, and it's uploaded on the share drive for y'all. Yeah. If the pH is down, it's uncompensated. If it's normal pH, it's compensated. The CO2 is up, and it's up. The bicarb is normal in uncompensated respiratory alkalosis, and in compensated, the bicarb is up. Acidosis. Acid yes, this is for respiratory acidosis. Yeah. Oh. Respiratory acidosis increases, is a primary increase in carbon dioxide, PCO2, without compens with, with or without compens compensatory increase in bicarbonate. Decrease. Respiratory acidosis, decreased respiratory rate. Respiratory alkalosis, increased respiratory rate. And then metabolic acidosis is the inverse of that. Where my questions go? No. Which one have we not done yet? I don't know. I was just trying to find one for him to do so that way he could get caught up to where we were at. So, Scott, Paul, no helping. Oh, Here's gosh, no, Paul, help me. 23. I'll, I'll walk you through it without giving you the answers, through the steps. So your patient's ABGs are pH not. is 7.32. 7.32. So Higher low. So that's low on the pH. Good. So this is PCO2. PCO2. 24. 24. Higher low. Mm, that's low. Your O2. This is O2. 62. 62. That's low. And your bicarb of 12. So, bicarb is the 21 to 28, right? Right. Yeah. Anything in the 20s, you're cool. What was the saying you said? Anything in the 20s, Bi. pretty much you're okay. It's like... Bi, Bi is, is okay. Bi is 2. Okay, that's yeah. what it was. 
So Scott, so. is this a comp? You've got compensated, partially compensated, uncompensated. Is this compensated? And Paul has the answers. <coughs> compensated or not, pretty much depends on if the pH is in the normal range. Yeah. So the pH is not in the normal range. Compensated. So we're thinking uncompensated to partially uncompensated. It's definitely not compensated. Right. So is it, is the bicarb normal? No, bicarb. So is it metabolic? So yeah, so they said that. Is the respiratory system trying to compensate? Trying to, but. But not doing a very good job. It's not right. So the answers we're stuck between are going to be a partially compensated metabolic acidosis and an uncompensated metabolic. Metabolic acidosis. You've got A and D. So, what's the trigger between compensated and not? The pH. So, because of the pH alone, because that's low, it can't be compensated, right? Not well. This this one throws in a weird it, thing. It, it says it partially compensated, which is it, kind of if it was if it was a comp, the pH would be a seven three six. If it was compensated. Or 7.34, it'd be 0.1 too low, not... So right at the border, but not that low. Yeah, so this is, I would say this is an uncompensated metabolic acidosis. Paul, what you got on the answers? A? No. They're calling it D? D, I think. D. They're calling it D? The pH tells you that it may be, uh, it must be uncompensated or partially compensated because the pH is low. Which we'd established. The pH tells you it's acidosis because it's down and not up. It's in the acidotic range, not the alkalotic range. The PaCO2 is low, which suggests alkalosis, while the HCO3 is low, which suggests acidosis. That's why it's partially, because the CO2 is trying to compensate, but it's not doing a good job. That's what makes it better than uncompensated. The, PO, the CO2 is not normal. Compensated Therefore, it's there is the job metabolic etiology with, without adequate respiratory comp compensation. Tor. So we did it. Yeah. Yay. And that's like the thing you were talking about where you can be metabolic, metabolically acidotic or alkalytic. And then you have a respiratory component where it's trying to fix it. That was an example of that where you were metabolically acidotic, but you were respiratory wise, it was mimicking an alkalosis or it was creating an alkalosis to try and balance it out. It was so it was attempting to compensate. And it wasn't too far off, but it was, wasn't getting the job all the way done yet. So, I'm dead. Partially. so these two are Come new. teach us stuff. She's, you know she's taking this. Mm -hmm. At Jefferson. Yeah. So 29 is new for everybody. Yep. Your ABGs. A pH of 7.24. Yes, uh, acidotic. PaCO2 of 60 is high. A PaO2 of 68 is low. And a bicarb of 23 is it's normal. normal. So which of the following patient presentations? We've done this one. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. No, we did not. This was one of the first ones we did. It asked a different question. It just gave us the it, different It's a answers. different blood gas. Or it gives the same answers. It's just the different. Oh, blood gas is Because we were arguing over benzos versus steam. I know. There were four. This this question is listed four different times with four different blood gases. I'm not kidding. It's that damn psych test. This is, I'm not kidding. It's literally, it's four different times in here. circles or something? I would say. <laughs> I feel like I've <laughs> I, give this I one took a, a 500 answer. question test. There were only seven different questions on it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the MMPI. Mm -mm. I've had to take it like six times now. Sucks. I hate it. And the last time I did it, right. they gave me three versions of it. So. By accident. He's. I took 1,400 questions. Hypoventilating. Yes. Because he's got too much CO2 in and not enough O2 in. Yeah. Well, hang on. So, first of all, so, first of all, I'll go with this, okay? The benzos so, are bad. So first of Bad. all, the, the pH is acidotic, right? Correct. 
Okay, so it's an acidosis of some kind. So then, you, this is the way I was taught to, to figure this out. So then, look at the back carb. The back carb is either normal or not. And it's normal. It's normal. In this case, it's normal. So it's not metabolic. It's going to be just purely respiratory. But we're not trying to figure out metabolic or respiratory. No. Okay. And then, <laughs> but still, it helps for me to know that part. Okay. And then the CO2 is high, so that way, that's creating the, uh, that's what's creating the acidosis is what we're figuring is. So the reason it would be high would mean that they're probably hyperventilating, like she said. I'm thinking A. I would agree, 100%. I think A. Because DK, you're gonna breathe fast and blow it off. The gas indicates the patient is retaining CO2 secondary to inadequate <coughs> men ventilation. Yes! The gas also suggests an acute state as the, high, uh, the bicarbonate has not left the normal range to attempt to compensate yet. And we also said that the bicarbonate is the, the bicarbonate system is the first line of defense against acidosis yes. and alkalosis. That was the first question. Bicarb is the main buffering system for the body, not respiratory. Respiratory second. Do you see why we're like drowning? It's a lot of information. But it's so you know that cool. when we get closer to this, we're going to have to have study sessions. Yeah. And just like come in here on a weekend for five or six hours and go around the room asking questions. It's going to be really hard. We can do it though. I really believe in us. So, next, number 30. Diagnosed with an AMI complicated by pulmonary edema. Onset was 45 minutes ago for chest pain. You would anticipate the ABG to show. God, that's terrible. I'm going to go with D. I'm going to go with B. What did you say, Paul? D. Delta. I believe it's going to be of a respiratory etiology. And due to the pulmonary edema, I don't think it's going to be compensated. But I don't know the answers to these, so we're we're literally doing this. I was thinking A. Well, think, it, it, it's gonna I, give us I, the answer. I, okay, here. okay. Why are you thinking A? Well, so I thought D, but I'm just thinking. All right, if so, they got the pulmonary edema going on, so they got the fluid down there. They're not. The gas exchange is going to be limited. Ventilating really good, so they're probably going to be retaining CO2. And they've been doing this, so I'm assuming that the pulmonary edema kicked in, and then 45 minutes ago that created the chest pain, and we got the STEMI going on. So. I would think that by then, 45 minutes of that, or more, but 45 minutes for the chest pain, the pH would probably have kicked, making it uncompensated. But at the same time, depending on how bad the pulmonary edema is, maybe there's Crack still... Cracked my hip, it felt amazing. Maybe they're so compensated. So, A, D, B. Are you going with C just to throw it out there? No, why do you say B, though? I think it's going to be of a respiratory nature because of the pulmonary edema. I don't think they're going to be able to do a proper gas exchange. It makes me want to... It makes me want to think that they're going to have an alkalosis, but I don't necessarily have this great base for it. I Wait just, a I'm trying quick to. quick question. I'm trying to remember. CO2 negative. O2 positive. Negative takes it down, and the change in CO2 changes the pH. Yeah, I'm going to stay with D, but I think I'm wrong. So I'm going to go with Just D, to... and I'll tell you the reason why is because I think when you pulled up that list earlier, I think MI was on the list of stuff to call alkalosis. 
right. What do we got? That's uh, true too, though. Right here, that this list that I said, uh, <clears throat> myocardial infarction, the pH is elevated, more alkaline, higher pH. Yeah. That All right. List. So, <laughs> Paul, what's the answer? For now, 30? what do we do with thirty? Thirty. And it gives Congratulations, you, you are correct. <laughs> oh. The patient is likely to be hypoxic, secondary to the pulmonary edema, which is what you hit on. The first compensate compens the the first compensatory action would be to hyperventilate and offload CO2, which will increase the pH showing respiratory alkalosis. <clears throat> Due to the acute timing of the situation, the renal system will not have had time to alter the bicarbonate levels to compensate for the hyperventilation. Yeah, that's the end of that. The end Basically they're saying the pH is going to keep the renal system busy. I mean, the pulmonary edema is going to keep the renal system busy. It's not going to be able to do the primary mechanism, which would be back arc, to try and compensate. So it's going to, it's not going to be able it, to fix that. Yeah, it's saying that. These it, are all up online, by the way, Scott, and all the answers are up online, too. But you also have the black book. So. Is that, yours is the rescue shot. Is it, does yours say that, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that she, oh, she so copied. Just, this is her book. Yeah, yeah I literally just book. took the book and put the pictures up there. Okay. So, yeah. all right, we've got two more. The last one is really, really, really hard. Right, and it's we, really hard. Are we long. doing ARDS or are we doing? We're doing ARDS first. So, radiographic examination of ARDS victim, acute respiratory distress syndrome, may reveal. I don't have a clue. It's either D or ground glass, I forget. Paul's got the answers. Pat, okay, Brady, arts, acute respiratory distress syndrome? Yes. I'm trying to think what that would look like. That's like complete total respiratory failure. You're done. That's how they end up on the vent and out at the Bryan Center, and then they rot their butt off. I'll talk about the Bryan Center. Oh, what did you have to take the Bryan Center today? The little whiny. The black guy with the... No, not the one that clicks at you. No, no, no. Oh, I know who that guy is. So we are not in I remember him from years. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. The black guy that talks. No, this guy didn't talk. This is a white dude. He was... and He's the guy that he's there from an arsenic overdose. Ooh. That didn't kill him. How did he pull that? Yeah, I don't know. I was like, what? I think I know what you're talking about. Who, what do we I got, Paul? The guy that you, that used to piss me off. Yeah. They ah, 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 what is it? Is it D or is it ground glass? All of the above options. Yeah. Hints offered by exams attending, attempting to describe arts on a chest film. Obliterated costophrenic angles. It's also commonly used to describe cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Is that the like um, angel wings that they look at for ultrasound? I don't. I don't know, but we have somebody coming in to teach that one week, so we'll figure it out then. All right, 65, the longest and the hardest, and it's two pictures. Oh, Lord. No cheating, Paul. So, I've not looked at it. You're 20 I know, I'm just screwing you. So, 28-year-old female patient. You can read it in the book, though, too. It'll come up there, but it's two pages. 65? Yeah. 39. Good God. Okay, I'm reading out loud. 28-year-old female patient presents with acute onset respiratory distress. H &H is As low. a child, I had bronch asthma and bronchitis. I'm not sure which. Today, she was arguing with her boyfriend. She can no longer catch her breath. Studies, initial studies, ascending facility demonstrate normal electrolytes. An H and H of 13 and 33.2, which is normal, correct? No, low. That was low. Barely low, but low. Well, ABG, bad, it's low-ish. ABG of 7.29. Acid. PaO2 of 55. Low. Low. PaCO2 of 78. High. Oh, my God. Well, it's better than 212, which was earlier. 212. Yeah. What? A bicarbonate of 28. What is a BE? A base excess minus 7. At, on room air at sea level. Other tests re 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 reveal a positive, if I could read. Positive D-dimer, meaning positive D tissue dimer. death and somewhere. Tissue death. Urine is negative for ketones, so uh, blood, uh, blood or glucose. And pregnancy test is positive. And then here's the last section of that question. As well. 
The RN taking care of him says she had a sat of 48. It got better to 53 with a non breather at 15. She says her lungs sound bad, but I can't hear anything with a cheap stethoscope and the doctors yelling at me. Based on this information, you would most likely assume the respiratory distress is caused from. She's pregnant. Pulmonary embolism. I would say a PE because her yeah. base excess is critically low. It's negative seven. See, I don't even know what they say. We'll get there. I don't know how to explain it. Like it makes sense. In my mind, but... Well, with the SATs. I would have said PE because of the See, D-dower. I'm thinking something else, though. What was her D dower? It was D dower. Positive. positive. Or who was positive? So you've got t- tissue death. She shunted. <clears throat> Oh, this is going to suck. Look at that. I yeah, know. I noticed that. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, that's okay. You got to pick a different color. I know. I'll, I'll find it real quick, and then I'll tell you two. She did this really fast the other night. I had, to, I had to do this at 1 o'clock in the morning and upload it so you guys would have it because it deleted the whole presentation. I had to redo this. Is this CB? This is mine. These are my notes from this because CB wanted you all to at least know what some of these were. And it's not be the first time you looked at it. What was I looking at, D-dimer? No, B-E. Base Base access? Oh, I didn't have that one. I thought we were looking at D-dimer. I was like, I got D-dimer on here somewhere. Yeah, it's okay. All right, so our options are acute, acute exacerbation of asthma. The acute... Okay, so I'm saying... If no, because an acute acute exacerbation of asthma <coughs> would lead to the hard lung sounds, but it wouldn't do... Her D-dimer wouldn't be positive. D-dimer that. wouldn't be positive. Psychogenic hypo, hyperventilation. If she was hyperventilating, yeah, her CO2 would be high, but her PaO2 would also be high. Because there's nothing. But her PO2 if she would was be high, if low she, because she's she's throwing it out so fast. All right, wait. Which has more affinity for the hemoglobin, oxygen or carbon dioxide? Oxygen, I think. Right. So if there's nothing, nothing affecting the cellular respiration, and there's nothing affecting the actual ventilation. Then both PaCO2, no, can't. Yes, you can. PO, PO2, I'm, yeah, I'm confused my damn self. What? How long has she been in the ER? Does that... No, it did not. No. How long ago it started? No. I think the asthma was just thrown in there as a, as a curveball. To the trick yeah. you. And the psychogenic, yes, yeah, she, she, she was arguing, but that... But she's got a PE because her D-dimer uh, indicates yeah. that she's got yeah. the increased state of coagulation. I think, so. I think she has a PE. I think her D-dimer yeah. is positive, so that gives us that. And, and, and pregnancy is so just this her. huge, like, ha, huh, like golden yeah. chalice thing saying, hey, this is a huge risk factor. Y'all All right, so why wouldn't it be hypoglycemia? Why would it be hypoglycemia? Well, hypoglycemia doesn't cause this excessive this. hyperventilation state. It doesn't cause her to have shortness of breath. It doesn't cause the low where, SO2. Where did it say she was hyperventilating? Well, we're assuming that because of the blood gases that we just got. Just as respiratory distress. Respiratory distress where she cannot catch her breath, her CO2 is elevated, her O2 is low, and she's but in a respiratory alkalotic be... state. Alkalotic state. Or See, that, that, acidotic, that, that, sorry, if she's retaining CO2... She's in a respiratory acidotic state. If she's retaining CO2, mm-hmm. that could be a, a, a acute... The CO2 alone would be an acute exacerbation of asthma because it's swollen shut and it's not letting the gases leave. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just these other things just screaming at me. I'm not saying you're yeah, wrong. I get it. I get what you're saying and there's that's the thing about these there's multiple the that could be me, it. Yeah. I know there, that in the pregnancy I feel answer. like that's just saying hey guys. All right, you ready? Fact yeah. That she hear much. Has everybody made a decision? Yeah. All right, I'm going. I'm agreeing with you. Okay. On D. Okay, so here we are. You ready, boys and girls? It is Delta. Yeah. The scenario presents you with what seems a very incomplete and sketchy picture, and that's intentional. 
I've read just enough information to make the options, all the options appear all plausible. But D is the only quite likely. The tips that lead you towards this PE include pregnancy. All pregnant women are, by their very physiological nature of pregnancy, hypercoagulopathic and commonly toss clots. SpO2, failing to increase SpO2 substantially from 48 on high flow oxygen suggests a shunt oxygenating unperfused lung. That's really what he's The alveolar ulterior gas oxygen differential is greater than 20. Calculated by the you might want to bring up the answer. Did you copy the answer? Into this one? Yeah, you had the answer because there's a lot of information here. Yeah, it's like three pages. Yeah, it's a page and a half. Yeah, it's a page and a half here. Yeah, no. Mm, 65. No. I did. It's just trying to find it. Here it is. Yeah, that's page one of it. Oh, God. What did I do? Yeah, there's a lot of information here. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons, but the thing is, like, I feel like it was screaming red flags at me, like, hey, yeah. preggers, <clears throat> hey, well, breathing problems, for, hey, For me, the thing baby. was, it's pregnant and the hey, cause of D-dimer, which pretty much already says you have a clot somewhere, and it's, given the, the acute situation, I would say lungs is a pretty pretty damn good place to start guessing. And then number two is, if she can't hear it, that, that's, uh... If she if she's suddenly so bad that she can't hear it, I think that she's hit like one of the really main. Or it's a cheap stethoscope. Yeah, but uh, say I'm thinking that she's hit one of the really uh, one of the really big uh, arteries in the lung, and so there's a big huge chunk of her lungs that are not doing anything right now; they're dying off. no matter what you do to help it, she's not oxygenating. Oh. She's not blowing off CO2. That last paragraph is interesting. Okay. The A to A differential. Okay. I don't know where So that her is. PAO2. Oh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in the question... <clears throat> her PAO2 was 55. And her PAO2 should have been somewhere between... Now, approximating shortcut that you, is to consider what the PAO2 should be. This can be estimated by using the calculation of FIO2 times 5. In the case where she was on room air at the time, the initial ABGs of an FiO2 of 21 times 5, her PaO2 should be about 100. 21 times 105 if you do the math exactly, but about 100. Because room air should put you in that range of 80 to 100. Yeah. When she was placed on 100% oxygen, Okay. So, by calculating our PA2 from the above equation, it came out to be Just read your test tip. <laughs> The expected PaO2 should be the FiO2 times 5. That's the test. Tip okay, that so if we have a patient on oxygen. She has a shunt also with this A to A gradient that's showing she has a positive D dimer. 
and it suggests that there's a pulmonary embolism. So. But so, so if we had a patient on oxygen, we would expect their PaO2 to be the FaO2 times 5. Above 100? Right? Or is it a percentage that it wants you to type it out? No, of? no. Yeah, like what if they're on 15 liters? If okay. On room air, they're 21. They're 21 on room air. Right. So if we put a patient on four liters. Puts you at like 28, 29. Well, it's oxygen. five per liter. FiO2 is five per liter. No, no, I'm saying the, the, the no, FiO2 wait. you're getting is, uh, you said four liters? I think that's like 32. Wait a minute. What is it? Is it four or five? Four. Four, four, what? No, 20 plus five. Yeah. 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 Twenty. It when yeah, we four sound, four when we like when, when we pick yeah. it when we pick it. It's five. We we use five for the vents, right? Five for the vents on what? For the leader flow to give you your FiO two when you don't have a high flow and you can't dial it in for the nine hundred. For the nine hundred, I would use six, but but just because we have the four and the six, so I didn't think we had. We don't really have the five. With four and six. Your, so six. Your vent doesn't mix the gas for you? The one vent doesn't. No, it, it's the LTV 900. Oh, the shitty one. Well, no, I really like that vent. Quit calling it that. I told you that's the shitty one that we used to have. That's, we have He's the telling me about one that, that he carries around, and it looks like that freaking printer over there. It is. It's it not that big. Well, it's, it is kind of big. It's like this <laughs> big. We have the drainers We're, at my job. Yeah. The We're draters, off topic. The ones that you can turn off, they can never, alar or never alarms. <laughs> We had one of those in here. Yeah. You could put a patient on it, start ventilating them, and then turn it off and never realize it was off. If your power failed, you wouldn't know it went off. Really? Mm. All right. Ooh, here's a vent one. <laughs> That's All right. funny. This, I mean, this, is a, funny this is not in that book. This is on the Back to Basics book. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. This is a good book. I recommend it. Yeah. It's hard, but it's a good book. 40-year-old um, man from a rural ICU. Ground, ground glass appearance. Hey, we already said that. Arts. 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 Is it right? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Well, let's, let's, let's yeah, work let's, it out. Let's, see. let's make it work. They're on a vent with a tidal volume of 900. Good God. <laughs> well, so yeah, they've got I, a new moon. <laughs> I wonder. How rate, big an old boy is this? Oh, God. This keeps getting worse. A oh, rate of 16. Like They're on an FiO2 of 80%. 80 effing percent. All right. Oh, my God. Five. And look. Whoa, no open. peep. No freaking wonder. Their PO2. pH may be normal, but their PO2 is low. PO2. PO2 is okay. Yeah, the PO2 is way, way but Based on that equation, it's if it's a point A. They're struggling to keep that O2 with 80%. FiO2. You should not increase your O2 FiO2 above 50% for long-term care. Mm -hmm. And this guy is just chilling with it. 80%. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. This is 20. This isn't is long-term care though. This is acute from a Thomas, ICU. nobody asked you. <laughs> I'm just saying. It is ARDS. Mm. Just saying. And then there's a really long paragraph about why it's ARDS. There's really long paragraphs about why it's ours. Irregularly infiltrated with highly vulnerable to... So go back to that question, the question itself. Get back. Oh, crap. All right, so the question, going back to what they were saying about calculating your PAO2. Yeah. He's on 80%. So 80 times 5 is 160. No. That's a lot. 80 times 5 is 400. His FIO2 right? is ridiculously high. His We should expect to see his PAO2 somewhere in the 400 range. Am I doing the math right? It was totally normal. Totally can, normal and healthy lungs. Down? Yes, that's correct. By that math. But it's not normal. Yeah, his, his there's PAO2 there's something blocking it. Well, there well is, there he's probably got a pneumothorax. <laughs> if you're, well, yeah. if you're giving him a, 
from the title of that interview. <laughs> you're giving him a volume of 900. So a lot of things are wrong with this guy. Oh, All right. Let's Put do... In there, he'd float away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right, 25-year-old woman with a history of suspected overdose, ABGs. Ooh, these are good ones. Obtained prior to arrival at the sending facility, a pH of 5.2. She's alkalotic. Yes, with a CO2 that's low at 27, a bicarb that's okay, and a PaO2 that's high at 110. What do we most likely think that she OD'd on? You know, I'm just going to say aspirin. I don't want to think it through. I just want to say aspirin's been the topic of the night with that Pepto, so. (laughs) Um... Literally, every time we see aspirin, it comes up, hey, his boss injected himself with Pepto. It's not that was his time. boss. Yeah, I'm going to say aspirin. His training coordinator is the one that did it. Aspirin I've intoxication been... causes an elevated, ha- yeah. an, an elevated pH. All right, we've determined it's not narcotic overdose, ha- didn't we? Is that uh, what you just said? I, yeah, I would, I would say we can definitely kick that to the curb. We can kick that out. The CO2 would be higher because if a narcotic overdose, that causes respiratory depression, and respiratory depression would cause... Uh, uh, Cause CO2 trapping. I think it'd be a tricyclic overdose. That's what I was thinking. Like. I'm going with aspirin. Aspirin? I think All right. got to find the answer somewhere in here. How much does I want to say aspirin? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Are you sure? 33. C. Yeah. Aspirin. Aspirin. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Read the answer, though. Oh, God. I don't know why it does this. It is. All right. Metabolic changes lead to renal depletion of fluids and electrolytes, hypoglycemia, hypokalemia, and a mixed presentation of respiratory and metabolic acidosis coupled with metabolic acidosis, which will cause the cardiac dysrhythmias, acute pulmonary edema, and renal failure or neuroinjury. Classic presentation is a GI bleed with unexplained elevated anion gap. That sucks. Yeah. We did that one, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. I think there's only one left. Acute respiratory failure is defined as... I don't know the answer. Actually, I don't know the answer. Crap. Mm. I'm close. <laughs> so, talking it out, the PA, the PO2 should be between. less than 90, but if it's 82, it's still normal, so that one's gone. Whatever. Greater than 35, but it can it's be 35 to 45. I'm going to go with A. I think it's going to be A as well. I thought A or B. It's A or B, but that's what I Well, B, but then I figured A is... Less than 60 is worse, so. Uh, 80 is right there on the brink. I don't know. You realize, like, I had, like, 16 billion pages of this. And I took pictures of it on my phone, because that was the cheapest way to get this to everybody. It's 23. 23. A. Acute respiratory failure with a mercurial blood gas within normal range. Less than 60 O2 and a CO2 greater than 50. What's up, Perez? What's up? Spice cake with cream cheese. Eat them up. Hey, do you like the purple sheets I filled the trucks with? Oh, you were fucked. <laughs> Why? Why? Purple sheets? Yeah. Yeah, Kim Smelly did that. She thought she was funny. Work three codes on Christmas. Now, if I get to get on a truck with the person who thinks cholesterol is a government conspiracy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I think it's proud. All right. So, we have gone over ABGs. On the stuff I sent out, I would recommend to read this as best you can, except for the top part, which apparently you can't read because it's in yellow, but whatever. These are like the actual pathophys behind the labs of what they mean. You don't have to like memorize this, but kind of be familiar. Like liver enzymes are up because in liver damage because they're normally in the liver, and when the liver gets damaged, they release into the vasculature. Stuff like that. Um, creatinine. This was one of my favorites. Like creat creatinine. 
is turned into creatinine and then excreted through the kidneys because creatine is a byproduct of the metabolism. Creatine or creatinine? Creatine and then creatinine is the chemical product that's excreted. So just knowing like those little things is kind of helpful. Like you creatine's don't have creatine's metabolized into creatinine. That's yeah. It's important to know that like in creatine is needed for synthesis or for uh, yeah for protein synthesis. Mm-hmm. But if you take too much creatine, it fucks your kidneys up for the rest of your life, and now you're on five blood pressure medicines. So these are all up and they're sent out in the email. I would read them and just kind of be familiar with them because CB wants us to at least know what some of these mean or are. Mm. Like when she says, hey, their, their H&H is low, she doesn't want you to say, oh, they're bleeding. Why are they bleeding? Why do we care? How do you know they're bleeding? How do you know this is happening? So we care. <laughs> yeah. We You're can't. assuming a lot here. We, a lot. I'm just saying. No. She's one of those ideal, idealistic types that still cares. I do it's care. Is it bad? I'll leave it it's like you. But yeah, these are all the things that are up in there. Just skim them and read them. Some of them have notes in the section, some don't. These were my notes. If you don't have the critical care transport book, this is chapter hey, eight. Hey, did y'all hire a new medic down there? Hired a bunch. Who all did y'all hire? Mm. Where are you from? From ones from here? Centra. Or. Bye, Perez. Uh, don't leave, Perez. The first one we took was Tiffany Hodges. Then we took uh, Chris Florio, which we promptly beat his ass. Um, <laughs> Poor Florio. He's had it so rough. Well, that's, I'm just telling that Did you hire Patrick McKee? Oh, God. Not yet, but he applied. Did he really? I haven't heard of that. Do just I curious. Is that the one? That's the one I keep telling I you about that, that always killed somebody. I, uh, you can't maybe tell I him that. Have. Maybe I should have gone ahead and done the interviews. Yes, they asked me if I wanted to come help do interviews yesterday. Maybe I should have done it. I don't care. I'm not working for Century. Y'all can have him, and he's not coming down here anytime soon. Can y'all put a headlight in Medic Seven? <laughs> <laughs> I have tested bastard like five times. Five oh, one coming down the road and I got one light headlight. Just really? a little light on mine. <laughs> I'm gonna let it shine all the way down that my like When I see it, I'm like, that's a medic. We, we, that's the thing is, I don't understand it. We, we will buy a brand new truck with all like with the auto load system and everything. It's the headlight. All I can do is keep my fucking headlight. Like it, it's it's pretty jacked. Come on, EW Tibbs. Yep. Come on, pop some money. Hey, did you see uh, Tony McKinney on the news this morning? Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all too. I plagiarized from Lifeguard. They sent us these a long time ago, and I copied and pasted them. Yeah, I put them back up here. So that way we have copy here for this too. Hey, you should. You should. You should email that. Okay. So yeah, just read it. Kind of be like, oh, look, okay, so that's what this kind of does for next week. We're gonna be like five up legs up ahead because we did the ABG stuff tonight. <laughs> and we'll still get the damn questions wrong. I say CB will throw something in there and she'll be like, because it's snowing in China and her toenail fell off and she is allergic to peppermint oil. <laughs> you are wrong. And you're like, I'm saying, the last time when she was in Lexington and we were goofing off and just like studying or whatever, I was like, when I left, I was like, I could tell you what the color nine smells like. <laughs> I, that's how much I felt like mine felt like. Mine. <laughs> Not seriously, I'm going to run a call and we're going to have to give Zoe a friend and I'm going to be like, how much Zoe a friend do we get? The whole box. <laughs> how, much, how do we give it? Do we do it like... <laughs> Between the toes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I got to think because I stuck a lady in the foot. With the piggy back of pig. Oh, the Pepto. Who dinged you? Your old Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Who else did we hire? We hired the day Thomas guy. We did hire, uh, um, what's his face? Did you hire George Taylor? Yes. Did you yes. fire him yet? No. He's going to wake I don't think we fired him. I know that we fired somebody from his office. I don't know if it was him or not, because I haven't worked him any lately. He knows there was somebody. I know we fired somebody because somebody was running them out. I, uh, Yeah, this bitch like talking about their whole story or whatever. And it takes like the the nurse station right outside the room. It's just Kurt and the family listening about this. You know, bragging on their 16 year old daughter that's crying rape and something. They were not very happy. So, one of our people.
PA is called and shoots an ass, and whoever was recruited was probably booted the next day. Relieved of their burden of yes. employment. Yeah. Made oh, available uh, for the market. Oh, we uh, we snagged up uh, Mark Altman and then shook him. Yeah. My friend, he came crawling us because I think it was the next without going to like life care or, or uh, first call. I think that's about the only thing left on the list. So. Did you 